he is not with us today, but I believe his words will be here. Um, me and him have talked, and I believe God has given me a true word from him today that's going to bless us. Y'all believe that today? Yeah. Do you come to church to get transformed? Yeah. You have to really believe that. Or are you coming to church simply out of routine? It's a question that you have to ask yourself. I don't know if you guys know, but I tell Pastor Lori all the time, if you can believe it or not, we are an apostolic church. So if you have an Android phone, we will continue to pray for you. But listen, listen, tell the truth, shame the devil. But no, listen, I want you um, guys to follow along. We have an app that you guys can follow along, whether you have an Android or not. Uh, it is, um, if you just search Faith and Family Church on your device, I want you guys to follow along um, and take some notes today. There's a statistic that um, God actually showed me this, Lori, in the Bible. If you take notes, you have a 78% chance of getting into heaven a lot quicker. I'm saying, I mean, some of y'all need to take some notes. Um, but listen, I want you guys to understand it's important to write things down. If we're honest, it's, we don't always carry a pen. Some of y'all don't even carry a Bible into church anymore, but you have your phone. And I want you guys to follow along because I do believe that something said that's going to be said today will bless you. Do you believe that today? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. We are going to continue in our series of doors. If you guys can please stand with me today. Can everyone stand for the reading of the word? Can everyone stand for the reading of the word? And we're going to come... A little differently today than last week. Um, out of 1 Samuel, chapter 10, verses 20 through 24. And it reads, chapter 20 says, And when Samuel, Samuel was a prophet at the time, had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. And when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was chosen. And Saul, the son of Kish, was then chosen. But when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, has the man come here yet? And the Lord answered, there he is, hidden among the equipment. I'll catch you up later in the message, but let me give you this. This was the inauguration of the first king of Israel. They were anointing Saul king of the entire country. Just picture this. Picture the inauguration. Picture our present inauguration, right? And when it came down to put the crown on the king's head, the king was nowhere to be found. Matter of fact, in that moment, he was doing what? He was hiding. He was hiding among the luggage. He was hiding in the equipment. I ask you today, what are you hiding amongst? They grab Saul and they bring him out, verse 23. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. I tell you this, when you stand amongst your peers... God will elevate you higher than anyone else. But are you hiding? Verse 24, and Samuel said to all the people, do you see him who the Lord has chosen? He said, there is no one like him. This is a prophet saying this. At this time, this is monumental. A prophet is saying this about somebody else. There is no one like him amongst all the people. So all the people shouted, y'all read this with me, and said, what? Long live the king. By his closed your eyes, let us pray. Father God, we're grateful, we're thankful that the spirit of the Lord is here. God, your presence is here. And wherever your presence is, Lord God, there is fullness, there is joy. There's vision, there's streams, there's breakthrough, through, and there's healing. God, I thank you that in this moment, 
You're taking one message and you're going to divide it up into hundreds of people to make it exactly what every single person needs in this moment. God, as you speak, God, as you speak, we will obey. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are in a series simply called what? Come on, y'all. If y'all don't know, just look up on the stage. Come on now. It's on the screen. What is it called? The Lord. Doors. Last week, did we have a great time last week? Yeah. But more than a great time, did you learn something last week? Yeah. We learned that not all closed doors are the same. Sometimes the door is closed because we closed it, right? Sometimes doors are closed because, praise God, God closed it. Is anybody happy that he closed the door that was in your life? Right? And then, furthermore, we talked about if you close the door and you're still behind the door, that's time of preparation. What are you doing behind your closed door. And then we went on to say, if the door is still closed, don't get used to closed doors. Has anybody ever taken some losses in their life? God is saying, don't get used to it. Don't get used to it. So today, I want to preach a message called, close the door behind you. So we finally got to the place. 2024 is a year of open doors. But I've discovered if you really want to maximize that open door, you have to close the door behind you. About almost five years ago now, my wife was about to go out of town. And husbands, I don't know if y'all get these things. She gave me a honey-do list. Anybody had one of those? Anybody got one of those now? Right? I don't know about y'all. I, I, I'm not the best with honey-do lists. Just not. So one thing on the honey-do list, it was I need the uh, smoke detectors change. I need you to look at them. Is anybody ever had beeping smoke detectors? Aren't they annoying? Yeah. Right? Ours didn't beep. Ours just didn't work. Nothing was beeping. It wasn't even on. But the reason why she said change it, because she was pregnant, and she was like, we have to prepare for this baby. I'm not bringing a baby in this house, and the smoke detectors don't work. So I had one job. I had one job. And so she came back home, and guess what? The job was done. It was. Yeah, give me some. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. However, she looked at the account and said, what in the world? You paid $800 for some smoke detectors? Goodness. I said, but baby, they, they done. You told me, give me a price. Don't y'all know women, you got to be specific with your man. Y'all know that. She gave me no budget. So I was out just, yeah, that looked good. Go ahead and swipe that. So look. So I got the list and smoke detectors was done and she said, yeah, something, this ain't, this ain't right. You, I, I go, go a week and here you are spending all the money on smoke detectors. So long story short, there was other things on the list and, and she wanted to paint this room and do that. And like, did y'all hear me when I said I'm not good at the honey-do list? So you know what I said? Let's just go ahead and get a new house. <laughs> True story. True story. You know what she said? What? Just do the things on the list. I said, but babe, and do y'all know, men, do y'all ever have a way of making it seem nice? So I said, babe, look, you got a new baby coming. You know, we want to move Deuce into a new school system. Wouldn't it be great if we just move on up? I thought, don't that sound good to y'all? So I'm going to tell y'all, I convinced my wife, let's throw this honey-do list away, and let's buy a new home. I tell you, it was a, it was a, it was, a, it, it, it happened. We did move up. We found a new home. But listen, in the process, 
our realtor came over and she said, okay, y'all need to paint this to sell it. <laughs> I should have just did the list. Y'all need to change this carpet. Come on, y'all need to redo all the carpet. So on the list, right? So, but in my mind, we can still do that, but we about to move on up. So look, long story short, we did everything, and I called some of the men. I called Jaya, yeah, I called some of the men to come help us move, and I gave some stuff away, blessed some people. And I can remember, I don't know if y'all ever moved out of home. I can remember going into the home, opening up the door, and it looked like a new house. I remember looking in, and then I got a little sad. Anybody ever got sad? Oh, y'all should raise your hands. You have feelings. So I began to get sad, and I remember, I start remembering all the things that happened in this house. I remember my son taking his first steps in this house. I remember the good reports that we actually were pregnant in this house. But I also remember the bad reports of receiving the news that we just had a miscarriage in this house. I can remember all the tears that we cried in this house. But in order for me to go moving on up, I took one last look as my wife said, go and check everything, make sure we got everything straight, make sure there's nothing left in the house. And I remember taking one last look, and I closed the door behind me. And as I closed the door behind me, I closed a chapter that was very monumental in my life. And let me tell you something, how crazy this would be. Say, for example, two months ago from now, and there's somebody else living in that house. Wouldn't it be crazy just to walk back in that house? That's what they would say. I'm sorry, what? Who are you? <laughs> I used to live here. That's the key. You have to make sure that you close the door behind you when you walk through that new open door. Here's the whole message. I got three points and I'll get there. But if I had to preach this message in 10 seconds, if you're going to step into everything that God has for you in 2024. Do you believe that? He has some amazing things for you in 2024. You're going to have to close the door on last season. You're going to have to close the door on your 2023. You can't maximize all that God has for you and leave the door open for yesterday. You can't have both at the same time. And for some people, you're believing God for more. And there's nothing wrong with believing God for more. Do y'all know that? There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, FFC, it is actually biblical to believe God for more. Sometimes, have any of you said, I'm good where I'm at? Anybody ever said, I got everything I need? Anybody ever said that? Shoot, I've said it in the past. God, I'm good. I got, I got, I'm finally here. I made it. I got what I need. But listen, here's the thing. God has more for you, and you don't even know it. You're content. Anybody content? Contentment is this. I found my satisfaction in what? In God. That's true contentment. And you say, he is enough. Contentment doesn't happen, married couples. Contentment doesn't happen when you get married. No, it does not. Contentment doesn't happen when you have kids. Contentment doesn't happen even when you have more money. Contentment only comes from God. But listen, there's a difference between contentment and watch this, complacency. Contentment is, I don't need any more. Complacency is this, I don't want any more. And let me tell you, complacency is not of God. Pastor Rich, well, how do you know that? I'm glad you asked. 
Because God says, I desire, Smokes has got talking about it, for go from faith to faith and what? From glory to glory. It means you're constantly moving forward. So there's nothing wrong with wanting more, correct? But here's the thing. You can't want more, walk into more, and stay in yesterday at the same time. See, let me tell you something. This is what a lot of us do. God has opened a door for us. We're believing for this door to be open, right? We're believing for more. But this is what we're doing. God, thank you. You open the door, I want more. But this is what we're doing. But that's still good, though. You're married now. You've been praying for this. But she all right, though. You, 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 got, you, you got the new job. You've been praying for this. Oh, but the hours back here, was, they were better. You're straddling two realities. How dangerous is that? God is saying, I don't want you to straddle. You know what I want you to do? If you really believe, if you really have faith, you know what I want you to do? I want you to do this. Close the door behind you. You can't maximize today and still be straddled in yesterday. Can you close that door? And here's the problem of leaving the door open. Do y'all, any, any fellas ever get together and you talk about your old college days, your old high school days? Any ladies ever get together and you remember what y'all used to do and you start reminiscing about the old days? You go to a cookout, family reunion, all hands should be raised. Okay, thank you. Y'all talk about the old days, right? But isn't it interesting how sometimes we romanticize and we think about the old days and then you hear somebody talking and you be like, that didn't happen. I remember that. You ever heard that ever happen to you? Like I was in college and I, was, I used to think, I, I, I thought, and my boy said, Rich, that didn't happen. I said, for real? Well, <laughs> did you ever hear this? Well, in my mind, right? So sometimes when we're thinking about the past, we're romanticizing something that wasn't even true. You romanticize about something, listen, that wasn't even good. Because in my past, I was broke. Phew. I had student loans. Come on now. My future is so bright. Come on now. But listen, you may say, Pastor Rich, give me some scripture for what you're talking about. Yes, ma'am. I can hear my mama saying. Y'all, here we go. Y'all ready for this? Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. I want y'all to listen to this scripture. The Israelites said to them, I mean, to Moses, he said, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots and that were full of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out here to the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. I want y'all to hear this. Israel's now in the wilderness. Y'all know the story, right? And it wasn't going too well for them. They, they, at least that's what they thought. The wilderness. And what did they say? They said, Moses, take us back to Egypt. Because in Egypt, Moses, we had meat, we had sausage links, we had, I need to stop talking because I'm, we fasting. <laughs> right, right, we had cucumbers and um, broccoli and, <laughs> right? So they, start, they started romanticizing about the past. But remember, when they went back in Egypt, guess what? What they were romanticizing was a lie. Because when they went back in Egypt, guess what? They were slaves. They had no meat. They had no links. No links. No sausage links and biscuits and my God. Ah, they had none of that. They were slaves back in Egypt. Because listen, watch this. They were intimidated by their new season that they were in. They were fantasizing over what they thought was the past. And it really wasn't. You won't step into what God has for you 
until you get rid of your old mindsets. Until you truly, hear me, get rid of those old relationships. Amen? Amen. Oh, it got quiet. All right. Amen. All right, here we go. Let's go. Here we go. We got to go into the meat. I'm, I'm going to give you just three quick thoughts. Everybody say three quick thoughts. three quick thoughts. The first thing I want you to write down is this. Don't apologize for open doors. If you're going to maximize the new season of influence that God has given who? He's given you. Stop apologizing for the fact that God has opened up a door in your life. In this passage in 1 Samuel chapter 10, the prophet Samuel, he went to Saul. It was before this. He went to him. He took him away from his friends. He took him into a private room. He poured out a bottle of oil, and he poured the oil on his head. He said, Saul, you are anointed by God. You are now king. God has anointed you what? For this season. And in a few days, Saul, we're going to have an inauguration. We're going to call all the tribes. We're going to call all the people. They're coming, and we're going to celebrate the fact that we have chosen you who is of God. But why did I just tell you that? I want you to let you know that Saul knew he was king, but he still hid. He wasn't caught off guard. He wasn't surprised when they called him. It wasn't a guessing game. They knew. He knew he was the chosen one from God. They did a whole ceremony for him. They bring him in, in front of the entire nation, all the tribes, all the dignitaries. The band was there, a whole ceremony. They said, God has chosen the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin steps up, the whole tribe. Then he's chosen from there the clan of Matri. The clan of Matri steps up. And out of the clan of Matri, he's chosen the family of Kish. The family steps up. And out of the family of Kish, he's picked us a king. Saul. Saul. They say, where is he? God may be saying to you, I'm calling your name. Where are you? Saul was hiding in a closet because he was so intimidated by the door that God just opened up for him. This is what he did. This is what he did. So the door was open, right? He went in. He closed the door behind him. And this is what he did. <sighs> I'm not good enough. I'm about to about to make a lot of mistakes. <sighs> Look at all those people out there. I can't do this. Is it really my time? The imposter syndrome. He started thinking, this must not be from God. Are you behind that door hiding? That's a question that you have to ask yourself today. God sent me to tell you, for some of you, God has opened your, a door in your life, and you're doing just like Saul. You're hiding amongst the equipment. You're hiding with the others. Maybe you've shown up physically, but emotionally and spiritually, you're AWOL. Has it ever been you? Because you don't think that you have what it takes to maximize this moment. Some of you have children. Anybody have children? Some of you have children, and you're not even being a parent. You're being a friend. And this is why you're being that friend, because you saw the mistakes that your mom or your dad made, and you said, I can't, I can't do that. The imposter syndrome, Wait, this, I can't do it. This is, this is not my moment. And instead of giving them what they need, you're pacifying them to struggle in life. Parents, can you be a parent? 
Some of you are coming to these doors every Sunday with amazing gifts, amazing talent, but you just sit there and then you go home. God is saying, I want to use you for my kingdom, but you're hiding amongst the others. One of the reasons why we hide is because we don't know that we actually have what it takes to get through that door. You do have it. You may say, I don't want to get out there and embarrass myself. Anybody ever said that? I don't know if I can do it. About seven years ago now, my father called me. I was in a Wendy's drive-thru. I know I'm talking good with this food, but I mean, just, uh, that's where I was at at the time. Probably getting a Baconator. I mean, I know it sounds good. I know. Ah, oh, my God. I was in a Wendy's drive-thru, and my dad called me. It was about seven years ago. He said, Pat, he said, well, he didn't say Pat. He said, Rich. He said, um, I, got, I have an idea. I think this is from the Lord. And I said, okay, talk to me, Pops. Um, he said, I want you to come and be one of the pastors at the church. I said, don't talk to me, Pops. What's, 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 what you talking about? And, you know, he got to say, and he said, Richard, I want, I, we're, you know, we're starting to build a church. You know that with a building. And before we start building, I know you have some expertise in it. I want you to come be the project manager. But I want you to come and I want you to be the youth pastor. And at the time, I was praying and I was seeking. And me and my wife was praying for a different occupation. Something, we, something had to change in, our, in my life of where I was working. But I never thought <laughs> that was the change. And that weekend, God led me to this verse. And it changed my whole mindset. It changed my life forevermore. And the verse was 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. It says, the one who calls you, let's pause there that's called you to be that wife, that's called you to be that husband, that called you to be that business owner, that leader, that pastor, whatever he's called you to be, the one who called you, he is faithful. And what? And he will do it. Hear me, there's no door that God has opened in your life that he will not empower you, he will not equip you for to succeed. Do you think that God would open up a door for you? I want y'all to really think about this and have you go through it and look foolish. Do you think that? Let me tell you, I thought that. My wife went on a business trip. My son was one years old, so about nine years ago. And uh, I didn't do anything at this time without my wife or my kids. I mean, I was just one of the first time dad. If, if she won't dead, it wasn't know nothing about to happen. I'm just letting y'all know, that's how I was. And so she was like, babe, look, you by yourself. It's about four or five days. And she, uh, and I had Deuce, he was about one years old. If y'all know any one-year-olds, they still in Pampas, right? Um, and so he was like, he was one and, you know, she gave me a whole list. <laughs> what to do and what not to do. On the list, it said he, he can drink juice. I said, cool. I didn't realize at the time what kind of juice he could not drink. So instead of giving him what we normally give him, apple juice, didn't have no apple juice at the house. So I gave him orange juice. It's juice. See, all the mamas know you done messed up, boy. And let me, let me tell you, I found out very quickly. I said, babe, this boy is messing everywhere. What is going on? She said, what do you mean? What did you give him? I said, I gave him juice. It was on your paper. Here she go, what kind of juice did you give him? I said, orange juice. I can hear through. Can y'all hear an angry wife or husband through the phone? She didn't say nothing, but I, heard, I just felt it. And I said, babe, I gave her juice. And she, you know, she gave me a dissertation and what I should not do and very nice. And I remember I messed up there and I was like, well, I can't mess up no more, so. He slept in the bed with me that night, and, and yeah. 
and I was so, I'm telling you, I was so afraid, and I didn't really go to sleep, and I was just making sure the boy was still breathing every 10 seconds. <laughs> First time dads, y'all ever been there? Yeah. My God, it was just me. So I remember that, and I remember, I remember there, I remember saying to God, I'm just not equipped for this, man. <laughs> like, what's, I mean, I'm just not ready for this, God. Like, what is it? And God said, you prayed for this. Please believe what you prayed for. I will equip you for this. But I'm going to tell y'all, at the time, I was not clapping. I'm going to tell you, whether it's being a mom or whether it's being a dad or being a pastor or entrepreneur, do you think God will open up a door for you and not empower you to do it? I want y'all to read this with me. It says Luke chapter 12, verse 11 through 12. Listen to this. Luke chapter 12, verse 11 through 12. Don't be concerned about what to say in your defense. Y'all read that? Verse 12, it says, for the Holy Spirit, somebody say, he is in me. me. The Holy Spirit will give you the right words even as you're standing there. FFC, I love God's word. Y'all love God's word. I'm going to tell y'all, I love God's word, but sometimes, can I be honest, I don't like God's word. That's just me. Let me tell you why. See, if I was to write this Bible and this passage right here, all I'm saying is I will write it a little differently. Here's how I will write this scripture. Hey, don't worry about what to say, because when you're in that moment, I would have gave you what to say three weeks ago. Thank you. Thank you, God. That's what I wanted to say. Don't worry about what to do on that new job because three years ago, I would have gave you all the notes, all the downloads. Don't worry. But he's saying, nah, I'm going to empower you while you're standing in it. That's a hard word. But there's something about the fact that God will always put you in a position where you're over your head. Anybody ever been in a position where you're over your head? Let me tell you, that's exactly where God wants you. You don't think you can do it? That's exactly what God wants. You say, look, God, I don't have what it takes. And God says, you know what? You're right. Because you need me to get through this. You don't have what it takes. But in him, come on now. God would never put you in a position where you don't need him. But in him, you have more than enough. The King James Version, good out of you, appreciate this. He prepareth a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anointeth my head with oil. And my cup runneth Oh, it says he prepares a table before me, the presence of my enemies. Has anybody ever doubted you? More importantly, have you ever doubted yourself? He's preparing a table before you. Oftentimes, the greatest enemy in your life is you. He said, he anointed my head with oil. Then, listen, so he anoints your head with oil. Then your cup runs over, which means the door opens before I'm anointed. Some of y'all didn't even catch. Come on now. Some of y'all get, get it tomorrow. So he anoints you before the door even opens. Your cup runs over. What am I trying to say? It takes faith to maximize an opportunity because you'll never feel on your own that you are enough. And if you don't feel like you belong there, you will spend your whole life like Saul hiding from the opportunities. Because sometimes guilt is a powerful thing. Anybody ever felt guilty? So if you look at this door, right? This door, pretty narrow. 
Doors are pretty narrow, right? A lot of our guilt comes from this. We look here, it's a narrow door, and we look at our friends. And we want to bring our friends with us, but guess what? Our friends can't fit through our door. And you look back, and you want to bring your family with you. Your cousin them and Pookie them. I see you, yeah. But the door is so narrow, it can only be you. God is saying, I have opened doors for you. And I don't want you to feel guilty for them. God is taking you to a new season. But as you walk through that door, can you close the door behind you? Sometimes we say, God, why me? Has anybody said, why me? Little me? Write this down. If he wanted someone else, he would have picked someone else. That's why you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17. I want y'all to, I want y'all to read that for me. I'm going through my, I'm in my door. Y'all read it, it says, but you. Pause. All the young people say pause for different reasons, but I just want y'all to pause. It says, but you. It says what? Up on your feet and get dressed for work. What it's saying is, while you're behind your door, before I open the door, are you preparing? Are you getting ready? It says, get ready for work. It says what? Stand up and say your piece, right? Open up the door and take a step. It says, say your piece. Let's keep reading. Say exactly what I tell you to say. Don't pull your punches or I'll pull you out of the lineup. Ooh. Y'all ain't know we served a God like that, did you? Listen, God says, say what I told you to say. Be who you are. And if you don't do it, I'll open the door for somebody else. I'll pull you out the lineup. You've been praying for that door. All he's saying is, walk in that thing. But too many of you are hiding. Can you walk through it? I'm asking you, can you walk through it? All right, point number two. Y'all ready for this? Thought number two. You need to walk through the door that just opened, expecting opposition. Woo! Y'all hear that? Walk through the door that just opened for you, expecting opposition. Here's what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Verse 9, it says, for a great and effective door has what? Has opened for me. Come on, FFC. How many believe in 2024 there's going to be some open doors, right? We believe that, right? We believe they'd be great and they're going to be effective, right? Continue on, it says, and there are many. Come on, say it again. And there are Any adversaries. Listen, your business just doubled. Anybody want their business to double? Come on now, raise your hand. Raise my hand. Anybody want their money to double? Anybody want their blessings? Anybody want more health in 2024? Toes. You want more. God is saying, it will come. Then he says, and, he didn't say but. This is what he said. And there will be many adversaries. Expect opposition. With every open door, write this down, there's going to come problems. And if we don't expect the problems, here's one or two things that will happen. The problems on the other side of the door, they're going to make you think that you miss God, or they're going to make you think this door can't be from God. But God said, it's from me. Just expect many adversaries. Someone has lied to you if you believe 
that song by the Commodores or the Lionel Richie version, whichever one you like. Easy like Sunday morning. My God. And if you're a church person, let me tell you, Sunday mornings ain't the easiest thing. My God today. Right? Y'all know life brings many adversaries. Much opposition. I remember, whew, I remember probably about five, whew, about five and a half, six years ago, we were at celebration. And Prophet Bull came and he spoke over me and my wife and he said, the lid is off, a child is coming. We've been praying for this. We've been praying for a child. We would love a baby girl, but we've been praying for a child. And God gave us, that's not me, I don't know. And God gave us Bella. Bella was born. And we were happy, ecstatic. But one thing came right after Bella was about a couple days later. The doctor came in and said, Richard and Shannon, baby is doing great. However, and she has sickle cell. Hearts drop. Now, we just went through this with my son. We said, God, we pray and we believe in that our next baby will not have sickle cell. and Everything's going to be fine. But God said, when he opens the door, adversary will come. And let me tell you this. Adversary came. But God. Everybody say, but God. But God. Not one day after that, we haven't prayed for her. We haven't lifted her up. We haven't played for, prayed for the blood that's running through her body. And by this time, and she's uh, about to be five this year, the doctors say that she should have at least 10 blood transfusions and this should be wrong with her, her, her organs and some people lose limbs. Some people have strokes. One blood transfusion. <laughs> and really, that was, COVID, COVID hit our family um, a couple years ago and she got COVID and her body just couldn't handle it. So she had to get a blood transfusion. But God said, and adversaries will come. The more you walk with God, the more the enemy will oppose you. Anybody ever walk with God and the enemy is opposing you? Let me tell you, you're on the right path. Matter of fact, write this down. Write this down. When, where, when warfare comes, or it's coming, or you're in it, Sometimes that is confirmation you're right where you need to be. Whew. Anybody going through something right now and it's rough? Anybody? Let me tell you, that's right where you need to be. Don't be shocked when you walk into a, your new business and it doubles. Then you have trouble. Don't be shocked you get a new relationship and it's getting a little rocky. Don't be surprised. Watch this. Expect it. It says what? And adversaries. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says this. It says this, dear friends. Don't you like how Peter is smooth with it? You got any smooth brothers out there? Anybody think they smooth? <laughs> you know, I, I raised my hand. I thought I don't think I'm smooth. All right, he said, dear friends. He said, don't be bewildered or surprised when you go through the fiery trials ahead. Anybody ever had a fiery trial? I'm talking about on fire. For this is no strange, unusual thing that is going to happen to you. So basically what he says is, that's normal. That's what's supposed to happen. Sometimes we forget that we're followers of Jesus. Sometimes we, we love to say he's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords. But in order to be that, guess what he had to do? He had to die and suffer. So often we miss the suffering of Jesus and we only want to talk about the triumph of Jesus. But if you guys know, 
before every triumph, before every crown, before you win that race, there's suffering. Point number three, let's land this plane. Y'all ready? Thought number three, just make sure when you walk through that door that you close the door all the way. I remember when we were building this building and the beams were going up and they were putting the drywall up and everything was going up. They came to us with a change order. Anybody know what a change order is? You know what I call it? More money. They came to us with a change order. And I, and I remember I was a project man. I had to go back to my daddy and say, Daddy, I need more money. And they said, what we didn't realize is that these walls that you guys see here, these walls actually are fire-resistant walls. They're fire-rated resistant walls. I was like, okay, sounds great. Let's make it happen. Here's up a, here's up a pastor. This is why. They brought me and my dad in, and they showed us why. They said, if a fire breaks out in here, it will stay in here. Or if a fire breaks out on the outside of these walls, it will stay on the outside of those walls. So what he was saying is, not only do I have to get fire rated walls, I got to get fire rated resistant doors. And let me tell you, that was even more expensive. And so me and Pops looked at it. He was like, well, we're building this thing. We got to get it. I said, yeah, Pops, we got to get it. And one of the things he told me, it's part of the message today. He said, if you don't get the fire rated resistant walls, the fire will spread. I want to tell you today, if you don't close that door behind you, that fire will spread. That smoke will get all in your clothes. And do y'all know when you don't close something behind you all the way and it's just cracked, that wind will continue to flow. When wind hits a fire, what happens? It spreads. It becomes a what? Wildfire. You have to make sure that you close that door behind you. Because you don't want what happened last season to spread into your new season. I leave you with this. I was getting on the elevator. Going up in my, in my wife's job. And I had to go up with all these floors. Before the elevator can move, what has to happen? The door has to close. I remember somebody trying to get on the elevator and they stuck their foot there to make sure the door didn't close. Don't y'all mad at them people? Like, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm the only one. In order for you to elevate, for you to go higher, the door has to close. And this is the thing about some of us. The door actually closes, and we're waiting. And we're waiting. And somebody gets off before us, and we get jealous. Or we get upset. I'll be honest with you. I'll be like, man, you pushed that button. I couldn't go. Sometimes we're always in a rush. Sometimes we always want it to happen so fast. But God said, can you wait behind your closed door? And as you're waiting, listen, they got off before you. That means you're going higher than them. Come on, some of y'all will get that tomorrow. That means you're jealous. But guess what God says? Don't be jealous. Can you wait in preparation today? Can you actually have the door close in your season and watch God elevate you like Saul, higher than anyone else, taller than anyone else? And it won't be your doing. It will all be because of Can you stand today? Can everyone stand? Hallelujah. Hey, babe, come here real quick. Whew. I'm just led to do this as we are ending our service and God, God showed me this and he said 
2024, it is a, a year of open doors, but some people rich are not going to close their doors all the way. They need me. And specifically, marriages. Whew. What I want, if your husband is in the parking, is in the parking lot team, I want you to go grab him. If your husband is an usher, I want you to grab him. I want all married couples. If your husband is not here, if your wife is not here, you can represent the unit. I want, I want all married, not your kids, just a husband and wife. I want y'all to come, come to the altar real quick. I want you to come to the altar. We're going to believe for some things in our marriages today. I want you to hold their hand, hug on them. However you show love, not too much though. We are in church. But all married couples, seriously, I want you to come forward. If your wife is not here, if your husband is not here, come represent. Represent for them. It's okay. I want y'all to come. We have plenty of space. We just read that adversary, it says, and it will come. And what we have to do is expect. Man, if you're like me, sometimes patience is patience is thin. And I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with this woman? You know what God was saying? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. That's your good thing. I gave her to you. We have all the married. Yes, there they go. They in the parking lot. Thank y'all. Come on up. Come on up to the front. It's very crucial. I want us to touch and agree on this thing. Listen, I truly believe in 2024, there's going to be doors of restoration for your marriage. I truly believe in 2024, there's going to be doors of peace. There's been some turmoil. It's going to be peace, more peace in your marriage. It's going to be more patience. I'll hold her hand for that. Ah. Ah. In your marriage. Hold it tight, yes. And there's going to be more love in your marriage in 2024. I truly believe it. Can y'all bow your heads? Can y'all can y'all close your eyes? Can we believe together today? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord God. Lord God, as we're representing a unit here today, Lord God, you brought us together and let no man tear us apart. Let no argument tear us apart. Let no situation tear us apart. Nothing, no sickness tear us apart. God, we believe today that we are a unit under you, Lord God. Lord God, we believe and we trust, Lord God, for peace that passes all understanding. Lord God, we believe in every marriage right now for favor, yes, for finances, yes. for health, for health. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we rebuke any sickness. Lord, we plead the blood over each marriage, over each person. Lord God, touch them right now, Lord God, with your healing power. Lord God, restore, mend every broken thought, every broken conversation. Lord God, heal every wound. Lord God, we're wounded. We need a position. Lord God, we believe you right now, Lord God. We believe, Lord God, that communication will be stronger than ever in every marriage. We believe it today. Lord God, we thank you that you're here. We touch and agree right now that you would do it, that it is done. We trust in your word. We believe in you, God. And if you believe that under the sound of my voice, I want to hear everybody in here shout. Like you've never shouted before, everybody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. amen these what? So be it. so be it. It's done. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today? You can make your way back to your seats. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, we, was, we received that word for our marriage in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
let me tell y'all something. Because our marriages are get better, guess what's going to happen? Our church is going to get better. Our children are going to get better. Our community will get better. Right? Y'all have to really y'all have to believe that. We are going to be better this year in 2024. Because our next is when? Come on, our next is when? Hallelujah. As you're standing today, I don't want to leave this place and not give any invitation. So if you're here today while all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, and you say, Pastor Rich, great word, and I know I need to close some doors and make sure they're all the way shut in some areas of my life. And I want to make sure that if I die today, I got to have a heaven to gain. If that's you today, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you just a slip of your hand. We'll pray and agree with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may say, Pastor Rich, whew, I need to be partnered with this church. This is where I want to align myself this year and years to come. If you want to be a part of the family, if you want to partner with us, if you want to make Faith and Family Church your church home, just slip up your hand and we'll welcome you into our family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, we are are family. family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray and dismiss us. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you that we understand the importance of walking through that door in 2024 and shutting the door all the way behind. Lord God, as we walk into the door, we understand adversary will come. But guess what, God? We expect it. And we'll be ready for it. Why? Because we serve a God that can do what? All things. Lord God, so as we leave this place, we will never leave your presence. Be with us. Guard us. Guide us. As we have one more week of the fast. We are praying and believing for some great things. Oh, God, work in us as we work for you. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Everybody say my best. best. No, everybody say my best best. and brightest brightest days days are ahead of me.